Well, the family drama, The Substance of Fire, is about to hit the stage at the Ruskin Group Theater in Santa Monica. It's about a Holocaust survivor who becomes a proud publisher in New York, and now his life's work faces upheaval after a personal tragedy, and he's struggling with his children. Joining me now are the stars, Rob Morrow and Marsha Cross. It's so good to have you both here. Mm, thank you. I, I have to say, I was a little surprised when they said who was coming to, to talk about this play, because I'm thinking, wait, they're both big time TV actors, and now they're, they're performing in this little community stage almost. So it's really nice to hear, and I have to ask you, what made you both do this? You start, because you have a okay. major history. <laughs> well, I, I have a history with the play. I'd worked at the Ruskin Theater before. I did uh, Death of a Salesman a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. and I consider it like the high water mark of my career out of all the stuff I've done, because really? there's something about the intimacy of the space and the, the masterpiece of the play uh, that was just a real interesting synergy. And so um, I brought them substance. I had done the original production mm -hmm. in 1989, playing the son, um, Aaron, play, mm -hmm. now being played by a, a lovely young actor named Emmett Butler. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so Robbie Bates kind of wrote uh, Aaron for me to do, and I did it at a company wow. called Naked Angels, um, which uh, was started by a bunch of us, uh, all, many of whom are well-known household names now. And uh, and so now all these years, and Ron Rifkin played the the father, mm -hmm. and, uh, and now all these years later, I'm, uh, I'm old enough to play Isaac, and uh, I was looking for something to do, and uh, and here we are. Yeah, and what drew you in? Well, I, I'm going to skip to the <laughs> meat of it, which is I sort of got involved with the theater, and then um, was asked to do a reading with Rob, and mm -hmm. uh, didn't really think too much of it. Thought, all right, let's see, mm -hmm. and it was kind of magical, I think. Yeah. And something clicked. Yeah, and I fell in love with the play, mm -hmm. honestly, and I love the theater. You say it's a small time to me. It's it's. Like, like, it's a gem. It's mm -hmm. just an absolute amazing little space with quality actors and great work being it's done. It's almost so. like a, a hybrid of, of movie acting yeah. and stage acting because, you know, you don't have to be as presentational as you would in a, in a big, large house, mm -hmm. you know, um, but you have to, but you're still doing it live, you know, so there's something tiny. great about yeah. it. And very yeah. intimate setting. Very intimate, intimate. Yeah. yeah. Tell us a little bit more about your character. Okay. Uh, well, I play a psychiatric, psychiatric social worker who comes to do a, sort of a wellness check or mm -hmm. on... Um, this character Isaac, and uh, it starts out as one thing, and it takes some really interesting twists and turns. And for me, it's the depth of the connection that is really interesting to me, and how it comes about, and 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 the play as a whole, what that means. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, someone was saying, "Well, it's about you know the book book market or whatever is that dated?" And I said, "That's like saying Lear is dated. You know, mm -hmm. this is mm -hmm. it's a story to me about love and connection, and and." power in some ways, but mostly yeah, family be, and love. It feels more relevant than yes. when I did it. I don't really? know why that is. How so? Well, there's just certain things like, you know, I have this line about how um, th things have changed. My son asks me why he's, he wants to do more commercial books, and I say, you know, uh, you know, things have changed. He says, "Why? What's changed?" And I said, "The way people perceive, the way they read. There's now, there's no silence in life. It's just static and white noise and fireworks and boredom, which to me sounds like the the the, the worst aspects of the internet. You know, mm -hmm. as a, as I I watched my daughter's generation not read books. You know, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. so uh, and then there's certain uh, kind of geopolitical issues that are part of Isaac's life that that resonate." Um, and and they're they're coming back, you know, now mm -hmm. in these times. So um, it, uh, it it oddly feels more relevant. Yes, There's a and lot is of, it, oh, I, I feel like also what's profound to me is the way that uh, you know ge generational trauma, the effects of that, and mm -hmm. having it not healed, what it does to the next generation, and we see that on the planet today. And mm -hmm. for me, that was the first thing that drew me in. Mm -hmm. Then it was the heart. Then it was. Well, of course, Rob. Um. You know, <laughs> and She's this has great. been one of like this. Is, uh. I don't want to talk about it too much because it's too good. So I'm just gonna save it till it's over, and then I'll cry and tell mom. Yeah, Kevin we're having a good time. Yeah, it's just magic. Yes. Do you miss? Um, well, you're still doing um, shows on TV, but you prefer this being on the stage. <laughs> you look so shocked. No, <laughs> no, I just always wonder. Yeah. You know. 
You know, on a certain level, yes, but then, you know, whatever I'm doing, I want to do the next thing. So, like, if I do a play, then I want to do a movie, or if I'm doing a movie, I want to do a TV show, or... So, there's, there's advantages and disadvantages to both, but, as they say, you know, they say direct, the movies are the director's medium, TV the writers, and theater the actors. Mm. So, we get to, you know, we get to own the performance yeah. two mm -hmm. hours a night, and mm -hmm. that's... That's such a, a, a gift. And when you have, Robbie is just a brilliant writer. I mean, he wrote this play when he was like 26, which wow. is when you, the, he captures what's going on with these people that are 30 years older than him, yeah, these existential remarkable. crises, that's extraordinary. Robbie wrote uh, Swans this year on, uh, on, uh, on FX, you know, oh, the, um, uh -huh. the Truman Capote thing, and he created uh, Brothers and Sisters, the TV mm -hmm. show. He's mm -hmm. just a real master writer. Yes. My only issue is I'm supposed to be having this scene with this old guy and I look <laughs> at Rob and I go, this is just not working. <laughs> you look 12. He's it's not, not looking, fair. he's not aging. No. I put, we're putting gray in my hair to help. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you both for joining us. We certainly appreciate it. The play sounds amazing. And again, The Substance of Fire opens this Friday at the Ruskin Group Theater in Santa Monica. And you can find more information by just going to our website, kcalnews.com and clicking scene on TV.